difficulty accessing mental health support as both an undergraduate and graduate student. In 2016, 61% of students with a mental health disorder were not getting treated. Um, mental health disorders are highly prevalent on college campuses and this number continues to rise. Consequently, the demand for health services um, has significantly increased on campus. Next. So I knew I wanted to ground my work at MICA, and it's important to consider the art school context. So what comes to mind when you think of an artist in mental health? My guess is that a healthy, well-balanced individual was probably not at the top of your list. <laughs> you might have thought of a starving artist or tortured genius. Um, the myth that a great artist must have some dark, tragic pathology in order to create. However, next, research shows that creative individuals succeed not because of their torturous mental health, but despite it. Next, many personality characteristics of creative people make them more vulnerable and arguably more prone to mental illness. Next, art and design schools have their own stressors which create additional challenges to students' mental well-being. A solution may seem like we need more counselors or healthcare providers, but this doesn't address the students that are not able to access the counseling center or cases where counseling isn't appropriate. Next. One student said to me, in people of color communities, we face a lot of challenges. We, don't, we almost don't even make time for mental health. That's not even a problem that we can afford to make time for. In addition, from my interviews, I heard that students aren't necessarily even asking for um, more counseling services when, when considering what helps with their mental well-being. Next. So this made me transition from a treatment model of mental health to a holistic, campus-wide approach to mental well-being. My goal was to discover opportunities to integrate wellness in everyday ways that students use their time and space. I conducted interviews on campus and themes emerged. For time's sake, I'll skip on them and share more of what came as a result. Next. So through my research, I incorporated students and faculty along the way, and this is a photo from a brainstorming session that I held on campus. Next. I created design principles to make sure that the design of interventions reflects students' needs. Next. So I'll share a few prototypes with you today. First, I hosted a distraction-free lunch on campus. One student told me, I often find myself with a paintbrush in one hand and a snack in the other. And other students said that they hardly ever stop for a full meal, or they see meal times as an opportunity to meet with someone. And even yesterday at this conference, lunch was during a presentation. And while uh, when, our, when we're distracted when eating, this can make our digestive process 30 to 40% less effective, causing problems like uh, gas and bloating and also resulting in less nutrients absorbed. So what if we added more distraction-free meals into either the school day or conferences and other parts of artists and designers' lives? Next. Uh, many students told me that meditating is helpful, but it's hard to make time for it. So I began a morning phone meditation group, and we meditated together for Monday through Friday for six weeks. Um, next. Lastly, I transformed a classroom into a restorative space. One student said, I don't even have time to see how I feel. And yesterday, after the morning presentations, I felt I needed a moment just to take in everything that had happened. We talked about the piece of um, moving forward is, is like the piece of trust. And I felt when we're speaking of empathy, how do we build and design time to really digest and, and 
heal from emotional learning and process. So I was looking at how might we create time or a space to pause, reflect, and recharge on campus. I set up multiple meditation spots um, and students experienced this. So next. I envision, I believe it's the little moments in our day that we can integrate wellness to create change, not just for individuals, but as an institution. I envision a school environment that promotes comprehensive wellness so that everyone in our community has an equal opportunity to succeed. A place where emerging artists and designers learn to incorporate self-care as part of their creative practice. So I ask you, how do you design wellness into your day-to-day? -day? 